What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Join the stars of the Ancient Aliens TV show, Eric Von Doniken, as he returns to Manchester after an amazing response to his last presentation. David Childress will guide you through the evidence left behind. Mike Barrow will take you to other worlds, where Nick Pope will present the real X-Files. Paula Harris will share incredible testimonies. It's time to believe and raise consciousness. Join like-minded souls on Saturday, June 23rd, 2018 for Awakening. What do you believe? Hi guys and welcome to another edition of The Moore Show. I'm your host Kevin Moore and for this next hour I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. Now on today's show I'm actually on location with my guest Jim Charles. Now Jim Charles is a multi-dimensional channeler and he joined me whilst filming for my documentary They Call Us Channelers. So enjoy my interview with Jim. Okay, so I'm here with James Childs. Uh, some people know you as Jim. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on, it really is. Um, we've had, a, the, you're part of the documentary and your, your contribution towards it was just awesome, so thank you. Oh, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, how do we get together? How do we how do we, how do we introduce each other? Then, I guess it was. I remember I contacted you. I think didn't I? Yes. Yes, and you kept popping up on my um, my. Well, actually, yes. Thinking about it, you did keep popping up on my computer sometimes when I was searching for channelers. But then a number of people were also getting in contact with me near the time when I was raising the money. And they were like, have you got Jim on? Have you, do you know about Jim? You need to get Jim on this documentary. Interesting, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are right now, and we're actually in your home. Um, and it's so cool to be here. Thank you. Oh, it's so good having you here. I was very excited to meet you. I've seen some of your shows, and I... I really appreciate what you do. It's really beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I mean, you've just tripped me to a really nice meal, which went out for lunch. So thank you for that. Oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, you know, um, I think we should start from the beginning here as well. So I will get into what was said in some of the channeling as well. Um, and by the way, that was, you know, that was, you know, some amazing stuff came through there, actually. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. That was Ish. He's one of the more, more amazing beings out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we didn't know who was going to come through for the documentary, did we? No, not at all. 
And uh, I thought at first it was going to be Takur or one of the regulars, but Ish decided at the last minute that it would be him. So so cool, so cool. So everyone's got a backstory. We, as I said in the documentary, there's no free tickets, right? No, not really. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and anyone that's having a free ticket right now, well, maybe they've had a, a few past lives or simultaneous lives where they've been a bit difficult. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this life has been very difficult for me, and there was a lot of prices to pay. But, you know, I think that all the things that happened to me led up to being where I am today. Absolutely. And I, and I want to get to that point as well, where you are today, because that's so important. So just, you know, let's just go back to childhood. Now, uh, you grew up in a very uh, religious family. Oh, yes. Very religious. And uh, they kept changing religions, looking for the more, the one that fed their spirit better. And they ended up in a Pentecostal, more charismatic church. And that seems to be the one that they liked the best. It had speaking in tongues and healing and different kinds of things that they all related to better. Or it would seem to more attuned to their personalities. Wasn't that very confusing for you to have so many different subsects of the religion? Um, a little bit, but after a while you sort of get used to moving from one to another. And I went to Wesleyan College, and then after Wesleyan College, they were already into Pentecostal church. So Wesleyan is not Pentecostal, but it's borderline. So so we're in Rochester right now, New York. Correct. Have you always been based here? No, I come from actually Pennsylvania, oh. Greensburg area. So I've heard of that, yes. Yes, it's like uh, east of Pittsburgh. Okay. And how long have you lived in uh, Rochester for? Since 1989. Okay, so a while right now. Yeah, this, yes, this is home. Quite a while. Most definitely. Yeah, this yeah. is home now. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And okay, so growing up, uh, in, did you always have a voice in your head, do you think, that was separate to your conscious voice? Yes, I, I absolutely did. And I would follow it for the most part because I thought it was my intuition or I thought it was just, you know... Uh, just a warning or whatever from my own self. So I would follow it, and I, it was always right, it seemed to be. Yeah, so, and and did that voice ever give you advice, or was it just, you know, you just, when you look back now, you knew that voice was there? Well, yeah, it did give me advice. It said, don't go this direction, or don't go there, or stay away from this or that. Sometimes it would give some direction. Other times it would just say, uh, I would be going to do something and it would say no or yes. You know, like I would say, well, I'm not going to do that. It would say, yes, you're going to do that. Or I'd say, oh, yes, I think I'm going to do that. And they'd say, no, don't do that. And did you get to tell mom about this experience as well? Well, I mentioned to her some of these things and it wasn't really accepted. It was like, oh, no, you're not, you're just hearing things and, or no, don't, don't listen to that. Or that's not anything you should be talking about or whatever. It would always be, it would never be supported. No, never supported. Um, and do you think you chose that kind of family? I think it probably had to choose that kind of family in order to get where I am today. I had to get through that and understand that kind of mentality. Because obviously some people have it a little bit easier than that. Oh, of in course, their, yes. You know, their, their nearest family. So this is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously you, you, you were, you know, as you grew up as well, and you know, you got into your teens or early 20s that you were aware that you were gay as well? Of yes. yes. I actually was. Actually, uh, my mother had asked me at one point if I was a homosexual and I said yes and she had a hard time accepting that she because she said you've been out with all these women this woman that woman what is wrong are you a homosexual and I said yes but she wasn't ready for that answer so that made life difficult I can imagine back then as well um you know it, it wasn't talked about was it you know no, no, no. it was condemned probably yes <laughs> Pretty much, wow. yes. Wow. And especially living in the area I was, it was farm country. It was backwoodsy. It wasn't big city life or anything of that nature. And so uh, being a, a homosexual or gay in that area was even more taboo. Yes. So 
it was very frowned upon. Do you think, though, when you when you bring it back to present moment now, that, that, that being gay and having the gift that you've got, do you think it's come hand in hand to really help you with, with what you're doing? I actually do, because there there are several things that I thought about over the years that if I were tied to a family or had children or a wife or whatever, I would be more uh, concentrated on the third dimensional world and, and all the things that were happening within the family. But here I'm freed up to concentrate on the meditation, the moving forward with the messages and with accepting of who I really am. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think um, uh, you know, you're, you're an example for other people uh, you know, who have this ability and who are gay as well. That, you know, um, yeah, it, it, you know it's, a, it's, a, it's a positive thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good thing that you know, we, we can't all just be one way with this gift. Yes. Actually, um, I never had thought about it earlier in my life, but when I did start it, channeling when i started to channel it became very clear that this is the way i was supposed to be this yes. is the this is exactly how it was to be yeah yeah absolutely um now you know back in your sort of you know uh late 20s early 30s again you know lots of things being suppressed Oh yeah, lots of things you know, not you, you know, and that, that 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 can't be good for you in a sense. Uh, where was you at that point in your career as, as well? Well, I was. I did a lot of retail management, uh, having gone to United Wesleyan College, which is a religious college, and not being becoming a minister or whatever. I, I just couldn't accept that for myself because I didn't feel like I fit in enough to do that after coming out. I just couldn't do it. So I I saw it as just anti-religious. Yes. So I became a retail manager and did many, many things in management after that and music and different things. So that was my life after that. And I kept getting flashbacks of some of my psychic era when I was younger, where I... In high school and college, I was very psychic and had a lot of different things happen there, but they were to be taken out of my life because they did not belong. They were evil or bad or whatever. The church frowned on those kinds of things. So, But they kept coming back little by little. And I believe it was through science fiction that was your way forward out of the religion. Yes. In some ways, that's very true. I had to find an escape that was positive and also fun for me and gets my mind off of the third dimension as a whole. I mean, in all religions, I mean, there must be some truth in there. Oh, yes. But a lot's been taken out, hasn't it? Yes. I think I was struggling between religion and spirituality, and spirituality won out because religion was too small. It uh, constricted the bigness of that God really is. And it constricted all the love. I, I didn't see all that love in the church, mm. I'm sorry to say. I saw some people that had it, but as a whole, it was not a real loving community always. It could be very spiteful and judgmental and different things. So I chose spirituality over religion because they had man manipulated religion into what they wanted it to be. God does not forbid you all those things. So I started to learn that who I was was freeing because God made me this way. I was not to be put into a mold and that's what the church was, is it was a sort of a mold to me, and I, I didn't fit in it. And so I figured, well, I'm either going to hell or I'm, or, or I, there's something wrong here. So I went to God, and he told me, stop asking for forgiveness for something that isn't wrong. So true. And I said, well then what do I do? And he said, forgive yourself. And was that when you started to channel? You were channeling source, God? I did not start to channel until I was 58 years old. Oh, but you had that knowing come to you of... Over you the years... You forgive yourself. 
over the years I had done channeling, but I didn't know it. Wow. There was a, because when I started to tell people that I was a channeler, they were saying, oh, we know that. <laughs> you channeled this for me a, a long time ago. And this is when you were writing music, you were channeling my life. And you, and when I told my religious friends that I was a channeler, they said, you know, that doesn't really surprise me. You had a quality about you that we didn't know what it was. And it was something very different. So that doesn't surprise us. That's amazing, isn't it? That's so yes. cool. It was yeah. always there. It was yeah. always there. And uh, yeah, you mentioned music. They so said you was in a band as well. Well, I was in a band, and I I, I did a lot of writing with a partner, Derek, um, and um, he's an amazing musician. And we did a lot of music together. And when I told him that I was channeling aliens, he goes, "Oh yeah, um, I'm not surprised. You've been channeling my life for the last." How many years? We met in 1980, and yeah. we did tons of music together, and a lot of the songs reflect things in his future life. So it was very interesting that he recognized that. But the first thing he did was say, okay, I want a channel session. I want a session. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it was <laughs> incredible, so incredible to me. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. And, and of course, you know, you've been... Um, with your parents as well, we were with mum, I'm guessing, or she's yes. saying here, there was a lot of forgiveness to do with mum because uh, there was a time when you and mum were not speaking. Yes, we went through a period of about three years where we really didn't speak except when it was absolutely necessary, but it was not a friendly relationship for a while because she was doing her best to try to win me back into religion and salvation and it wasn't working and um i know that she her heart was in the right place but her words were very painful and hurtful and i i couldn't be there i couldn't i couldn't be around that and um it was very condemning to me and very judgmental and eventually we said we were sorry and she said she was sorry for many things she said to me but the the scars are still there because it was very painful but again you know only you can forgive oh yes and i did forgive yes. her i love her very much yes. <laughs> and she's come through as well yes i have channeled her yes, yes a couple times yeah and i bet you know when you look back on that channeling it's, it's, been, it's been very healing well yes because she said she did her very best and that everything that she did was out of love and I knew that. I absolutely knew that in my heart. Of course. That everything she said and did was from a, a very good place. The but best. it was it was very painful at the time. Yeah. But her coming through was very helpful for me to see where the angle, the perspective she was coming from. Yes, yes, absolutely. There's always a perspective and an angle. And, and, and sometimes our greatest teachers. Oh, yes. Are not always the happiest situations. Exactly. And... Many times in my life, I found that to be true, that the the situations that I learned most from were not happy ones, but were eye openers. Sorts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so you've never heard about channeling before you started. You had no idea what it was about. Had so no idea. Take us to the first event when you started to channel. Okay, I had. Well, I'm I'm going to preface it by saying that I learned how to do Reiki about a year before and um, was a natural Reiki healer, according to my teachers. And so I started to do Reiki, and that I, I said, well, maybe I can make a business out of it. So I, I got a few patients or clients, whatever you want to call them, and one of them was Max Rempel, who is the, uh, the originator of humancolony.org, and he was one of my clients. And one day when I was at his... Uh, place and doing Reiki on him, they, I started hearing voices in my head saying, oh, do this or, or do that, or put your hand over his heart and feel his heart beat, and then put your energy in line with his heart. And I'm going, whoa, who's talking? I, I have no idea who's talking. So I said to uh, Max, uh, I hear voices in my head and they're telling me how to Reiki you. And, of course, you know when somebody's on the table 
having Reiki, they're sort of out of it, so that he just went, uh-huh, so not much of a response until afterwards he said, oh, it sounds like you're in touch with the aliens that are around me, and I said, oh, okay, so um, I, I, I didn't know what to think about that, but I accepted it. And then it was either the next week or the, within the next couple of weeks, it happened again. When I was at his place reikiing him or giving him reiki, I started to hear voices again telling me how to do better reiki. And so I said to him, I hear those voices again. I yeah. so started to say, I hear those voices again. And he said, may I ask him a question? I said, Sure. Now let's get this right. He, and he was a he's a scientist, is he? Yes, he's a actually he's a, a he has a doctorate and I believe it's in DNA or in, in the subject that deals with DNA. Yeah. Because he's working with DNA right now. Um and so he said, May I ask him a question? And I said, Sure. And I really didn't expect them to answer it the way they did, because when he asked the question I just started channeling to him the answer from uh, beyond, and my eyes must have got big, but he was going, yes, it's good information. Let it go, let it go, because uh, I was a little surprised and shocked, but it was, he said, it's good, let it go, it's fine. So afterwards, he, I didn't know really what had happened. Mm. So he explained to me that it was channeling, and I... Gave, he gave me some Bashar tapes. <laughs> oh, so, that will help. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember. He goes, you "You're not alone. This happens. <laughs> These, there's other people that do this." Yeah. So he was sort of helpful, and and then every time I I went back to his place, there was a microphone or a cassette recorder or something hanging over the bed, so that if I channeled again, he would catch it on tape. So at the time, he was quite into channeling. And uh, yeah. now, had he or, had he already set up a human colony? Is that already no? No, he set up human colony because I started channeling. Right, and just remind the audience, what is human colony? It is a site where I I'm. He set up a site where I'm a main channeler. However, it's actually for people who want to get to know aliens, to find out about hybridization programs. Uh, Galactic languages and, you know, galactic children, if they were hybrid children or whatever. A lot of different angles to learning about aliens. And, uh, okay, so, and this is obviously still running uh, as we speak now. Yes. It's only, only become bigger. Yes, it's gotten pretty large. It has some activity all the time. So, um, but it is... Where galactic languages started coming out. We had one lady in one webinar, Sabrina, uh, start to speak galactic languages and say, these have been things that I've been hearing in my head for ages. And out of the woodwork came all these people with galactic languages that said, these were in my head and I couldn't, I didn't know what to do with it. I thought I was going crazy. And it was the beginning of people learning that there were aliens giving them languages to speak to prepare them for first contact. So you're a multi-dimensional channeler. Yes. And you channel m well, m most things. Yes, I can channel aliens and angels and spirits and God. And um, it's it's different though because the angel the angels and the spirits come through the brain naturally, but the aliens come through by technology. Right, so right. So it is, there are different kinds of channeling. But that, that is different. So so let's just go back then. We'll get more into the how, what, what the channeling is about as well. Let's just go back to when the channeling started for you. So yes. um, there was a car accident. Well, this is how I lost my job is uh, I was in a car accident I had a cracked sternum and I was out of work for eight weeks. And when I went back to work, I worked for a month and then they let me go because there was no way to catch up. They replaced me with two people. And that's when I, about a month later, I started to learn about Reiki. 
And that's the beginning of the whole journey or the whole understanding of the journey. And it was a blessing from God really to lose that job and to to go the direction that I was going. So, but I didn't realize it at the time because I was so sad and so hurt about the whole thing. Friends of mine just said, you got to go to Reiki. And when I went to Reiki, it felt really good. I felt calm. It helped me to get uh, straight thinking. And so I wanted to learn how to do it. So I started asking how to do it. And that's when I discovered I had the ability to do it. What is it about Reiki when it really opens people up? I mean, you, there's so many stories that I hear about how it changed them and, and, and you know, they, they were never well, the same person. It's correct because once you are attuned to some of the symbols of Reiki, it opens up your healing energy. Healing energy comes through the universe, through the earth, through all kinds of spiritual areas. And so it opens the body, mind, and soul to more spiritual energy, more healing energy. And so it, it empowers you to, to heal, help others to heal. And that is a beautiful feeling. But while you're healing others, you're getting healed as well. And you're getting that energy going through you. Yeah, it's all the same, isn't it? it yeah. It's quite incredible. So, so let so, okay. From that point when you started to open up, um, uh, where was the car crash and all that? The car crash was way before that. So, but it was what caused me to lose my job, basically, which yeah. caused me to get into Reiki. Eventually. So it was before that, yeah. Okay, yeah. it yeah. was it was way before that. Yeah. So, so at, uh, um, when you got into the Reiki and then you was heading towards then becoming a channeler. Mm -hmm. um, how much trust did you have in what you were doing? Well, I was given a lot of uh, confidence by the people around me because they were getting something from my healing. So it was very um, encouraging for me to have Reiki and for me to start uh, a business with it because people were very trusting. They trusted me with that and they we were... We were, I, I knew them personally, and they said, I would like to come to you for healing. And that's how Max became one of my clients, is that he said, oh, I, you gave me the best healing I've had in a long time. I'd like to uh, uh, hire you as for a weekly session. That's really cool. That's really cool. So, um, okay, so you were, let me just get my, my train of thought here um, in, the, in the timeline. Now, actually, when you were pro progressing yourself with Ray K and you know, you know, on the verge of becoming a channel yourself, you know, actually doing it, uh, trying to do it paid, uh, I believe you, you know, you spent a lot of your savings. Uh, you, you know, until oh yes, what happened is this: I was, I was spending all my money to survive because I was older, and I wasn't. No one was hiring me. I was sending out resumes and. Are trying to get a job every single day, but no one was really biting. They knew that I was older, that I had made a decent wage, and so they, they were saying overqualified or whatever, giving me excuses why they couldn't hire me. And so I was going through this period spending all my savings. I even went and had professional help with writing resumes. I went to different classes and things to learn to do different things or, or to learn how to, to get jobs and none of it was coming about. So at the end of, at the end of it all, I started to, I had spent all my money and I had been channeling then since May of two, 2013, but I had been spending money since 2011 so by 2014, Max announced that I was going to, to have a sessions for $90 an hour. And I was going, what? He didn't tell me that he was going to announce that. So, But that was the beginning of my uh, occupation as a channeler. And in two or three months, I was actually making a living doing channeling.
And and was that because of the the human colony? I think so. I yeah. think that had that exposure yeah. really gave uh, a lot of people a, a good look at who mm. I was. Mm. And I had been doing webinars in uh, October and November and December of that year. They might have started in November. But November and December, so people were already starting to watch those webinars and get an idea of who I was. So, and, and I think that's important just to mention that, just for anyone else that's looking to get into this work, that, that, that is a way in. When you start producing the content and you know, give out free, basically, then yeah. you know, it's a way to market yourself as well. Yeah, I never thought of it as being, I never thought I was going to be a channeler as a profession. Yeah. That never crossed my mind until he said, Jim is going to start channeling <laughs> uh, personal channels for $90 an hour. And I was like, what? <laughs> and and just, so just explain the human colony to us. What can, what, what can we find on there? The website's coming up on the screen. So the website is? The website is human, humancolony.org. And it's about, about, uh, Connection with aliens. There are aliens connected with the site. Um, the Grukvik Near Alliance, which is eight now, eight different species that are in an alliance that are connected with it. And Takur being the spokesperson, which is a Lyran female, she's the spokesperson for the the alliance, and she speaks a lot to a lot of people. And she's sort of a mother figure in in many senses. And it's about hybridization, uh, giving DNA. It's about hybrid children, learning about things from the galaxy, etc. Yeah, uh, you know, because uh, for, for some people they channel source. Some people, you know, they're channeling the higher selves. Some people are channeling a future aspect of themselves. Some people are channeling a, a group. So this is all everything. You know. You mentioned a good point that every channeler that you've come across th th is part of their personality that gets involved into what they channel as well. Of course. Well, when they channel through you, they have to use your language and your vocabulary because they're trying to get their message translated as properly as possible into English. So they're translating for me into English, but then they're using my personality, my vocabulary, and all these things to get the message through to everybody else. And they, they have to use it as best they can so that people are not confused. And so it is difficult sometimes for them to uh, get it through properly, because I may not know uh, all the words that they need, because there are there are uh, sentences in their language that may not have a meaning on our, in our language. So when you channel, then you're very much a conscious channel, or you're kind of part Most conscious. Most of the time, I'm a conscious, but and I, I would say it. They push me back, though. I hear, but it's like listening through a, a muffled door or something. Sometimes. I, I hear what's being said, but sometimes I can lose myself in my own thoughts. And that's another reason why I know I'm channeling is because I'll be going, oh, I need to go buy milk and bread. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they're still talking and going on and on. And... <laughs> And I'm going, oh, oh, I better pay attention. So, <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, I've only met a few trans channelers, not many. Yes. And, you know, there's there's very few and far between, really. Uh -huh. But the energy did seem to go, as I say this on a lot of interviews, it did seem to go into a more conscious base and it's so that you're a part of the teaching as well. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So let's get this right. With, with channelers, there's all sorts of reasons why people can practice channeling because it's not just, you know, people's destiny to go on a stage in front of people is it for the channel? no not really no i i don't know why they chose me for this but i i seem to be pretty good at it but there are those that are going to be chosen to channel everyone can channel to someone else personally uh there will be those that are chosen to speak to a groups of people and there will be those that are chosen to speak to the world that it's just the way it is. They have they use the abilities of the people they have, and the the psychic abilities, the understanding abilities, the consciousness, and all the things that are available to them, to get through as much of their message 
to as many people as possible. So they want everyone to channel, but they don't. They know that everybody's not going to be on stage channeling. What would you say your definition of channeling is? I would say it's um, bringing through the truth from other beings that needs to be said to the earth or to the people that are around you. You can be a, a good channeler, but just one-on-one. -on -one. Or you could be a good channeler with just a few people around, but they're looking for everyone to channel and open that part of their brain to bring in truths from outside of this realm. The, the true space of where we come from. Correct. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Yes. Well, why do you think we come here for? What, what is the reason? Well, he, we're here to learn lessons about um, all the different kinds of realities there are. And I think that you have, to, you have to actually evolve your reasoning before you can evolve into the other dimensions. But um, that's why you see that some you have past lives that are in old England and in Atlantis and all kinds of places. And now you're here, all these simultaneously nows, what is the purpose of that but to reinforce all the knowledge of the universe that should be learned? And you will learn, learn everything eventually as far as you can yeah uh, uh, most definitely most definitely and um what what is, what is the evolution of channeling do you think do you think that it's evolving i do think it's evolving and i think it's going to become more mainstream and i think it's going to become more uh, acceptable and i'll tell you why i think that people are going to want to know about our neighbors, the aliens, are going to want to know things that they that will help them become better people, things that will help them grow, enlighten them to to make them better equipped for the future. Because look, when you look at the future now, it looks a little frightening, and I think that uh, channeling is here to wake up some people up and here to enlighten them as to how to move forward. Yeah, it seems to me it's always teaching information. Oh, a lot. Which, which is a bit different to the psychic modality where it's more validation. But then, you know, you truck a, you truck a medium, uh, sorry, you truck a channeler into a job where they need to have the medium skills. Uh, it does come through. It does seem to be cross-transferable. Cross yes, it does. Uh, because I have done some medium work uh, also. It's not my preference. But I have done some of it, and it, it does work. And there, there were some times when it was very transformative for the person listening. Mm. So mm. it actually started a channeler's uh, path at one point. Right, absolutely. What do you think is one of the main things you've come into this incarnation to learn? I've come here to learn how to be more of myself than I ever was before. <laughs> That's cool. I like and, that. And learn how to be a spiritual person rather than a follower of doctor uh, man-made doctrines or doctrines made by other creation Snap. creatures Snap. yeah so i so i'm i'm learning more pure thought uh, and pure spirit I, I can so resonate with what you're saying there i think that's one of my lessons as well is is i think i was forced out of the church and i think i think this was one this is one of my lives where i could um you know find religion but through a different way my own religion find yes. my own personal truth it's spirituality more yeah. than religion <laughs> absolutely absolutely and yeah it really is um Spirit, yeah spirituality is the purity of yes. religion it is the the bloodstream of religion but without all the the crap so mm. it is the the actual spirit that lives within you that that makes you who you are that helps you decide you know what's right and wrong essentially in your being the spirit in you knows right and wrong you do not have to go to a church and have them tell you what's right and wrong, but you do have to 
know when you are going to do right or wrong. And I think that's something that I've learned over, over time. It's like the spirit is with me when I go to do things. Self-responsibility as well yes. a lot, isn't yeah, it? Yes. I, 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 yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this is an interesting conversation right now. And um, I've, uh, I, I, I took so much from the channeled interview that we did. I mean, one of the things that you mentioned in the documentary was the fact that, well, not, well, not yourself, but, you know, the channel that, that came through. Just remind us who came through for the audience. Ish. Ish, Ish came through. And Ish, <laughs> Ish is? A ascended master from the draconian race. <laughs> that's the one. That's it. that's it. Yeah, and you know, Ish said to me about the idea that what what if this could be a life review? What if this reality that right now that you're experiencing is a life review? That's it, fascinating. It is a fascinating thought that you're always reviewing your life. Yes. In a continuous now, that uh, that the past nows are catching up with the present nows and that you are relearning or reconfirming the things that you know and making them brighter, more real, and um, a greater experience than they were before. Absolutely. That's just what it's like. And, you know, it reminded me to, you know, uh, as Ish said, you know, you know, you're living, you know, this, this big. What if you try to live this big? You know, if that was the case, if that's your truth, as much as what I've did, what he told me, that this could be a, a, another another version, or another review. It's just a review, yeah. So, so why not do it even on a grander scale? There are low, no limitations this time. But <laughs> and every every review, you get brighter and smarter and yes. more evolved. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. What, what what's one of the favorite um, entities that you bring bring through as a multi dimensional channel? I love to bring through Takur and. Lakesh, I love Shell and Ish, of course, and I love Yeshua or Jesus of Nazareth. And there's one called uh, I love Elijah, and there's one called Elika. Elika is also very. He's a creator being. He's a beautiful entity, a beautiful yes. light. Yes. So, and he's very happy and joyous <laughs> and i i really enjoy that about alika he's he's always very positive and always trying to to show you how you can become more positive and brighter so so each one that comes through they've they've got a unique trade oh, or yes. unique personality as well and and, and they will re the right one will come through for the person that you're giving the reading for i guess sometimes people know who exactly who they want to talk to and uh, Almost every time, the first person that everybody will ask for is my higher self. Oh. They want to talk to their higher self, and that that comes through. And really? Yeah. Yes, they will come through and so they'll talk cool. to them, and they know things about them that I don't know, of course. And and then they'll bring in another spirit, which will, oh, excuse me, That's also okay. know things about them that yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so it's very interesting to. Um, to listen to these different... Absolutely. Uh, well, we're just going to play a clip right now of um, one of your channelings that you do with the human colony. And it's normally in this room. This room's normally quite packed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's a lot of energy in this room. So it was great to come into your front room and just, uh, you know, be in, be in the place where you do a lot of these transmissions from. So, Thank so, you. so um, you know, if, and if people want to see past shows of yourself, because uh, when are you live on, on the human colony? Usually on Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm in Rochester, New York. So Rochester, New York is on the East Coast. So so how so just get the formula here. So basically, are you interviewing people, or is it just do people you know will choose a subject you know as they come into the chat rooms of what they what are questions they want to ask you or? Well, what happens is this. Usually, I'll get online and everybody will be waiting, and um, I'll say, "Who do you want me to channel today?" And the, we'll get five or six or ten requests for different people. Then I'll uh, I'll say, "Whoever has the greatest message, please come through." That's cool. And um, then out of those of people they request, usually it's those people. Sometimes someone other than those people come, uh, but. Many times, some of those people come and show up and give their point of view and teach or 
or answer questions for the people that are there. That's just incredible. And again, this is this has got bigger and bigger, and, and more people joining. Yes, it seems to get larger and larger all the time. I'm not sure. I really don't follow how many views it gets <laughs> at all. But it's it's uh, some people tell me, oh, this one got a lot of views, and I'm going, oh, that's really good. That's you know? neat. Yeah, yeah. And, but I look at it this way. Yeah. The people that need to hear that particular uh, particular video will find it. Yeah. And if you don't need to hear it, then you probably won't watch it. Well, I, I feel we're going to work together. You, you've said this as well. I've, I think everyone that I'm meeting, I'm going to be working with. I've got a foundation that I'm going to be building for channeling. Yes. Uh, under channeling.com. I want to push this work uh, to, to a bigger level uh, for the right reasons of helping people. I thought what came through was just so magnificent earlier on. And I really wish I could just share some clips with the audience, but... I, you know, I've just got to wait to get this thing edited. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the reasons for disclosure was really important as well. The idea that, you know, the, we create the reality of disclosure that, you know, if we choose not to have want to want to experience disc disclosure, well, this is uh, the rea this reality we, we choose and we create. So we create a reality, last, just like Seth said, and uh, as what came through today, we create the reality of not having disclosure. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So if there are so many people not creating disclosure, then that keeps it away. Yes. But if enough people are creating disclosure, that will bring it. So that's essentially what he said. Yes. And it was eye opening to the sense that the aliens really can't predict when that's going to happen. No. They try, yes. but they really can't do that because it's really up to each individual how much they're going to open up and want disclosure. And if you want it bad enough and you spread that want, if you spread that desire to as many people as you can and have them actually want that, you're actually uh, furthering your cause to bring it to them. And it was saying how important, I say it, he, you know, that they, they, yes, they, it was also, it was saying that how important it was to have disclosure because it's a spiritual evolution for us to not be so isolated in this region. Yes, that was a not that was like, whoa, yes, that is quite an interesting concept. Is that when you open yourself to greater things, you're actually bringing yourself into a larger concept <laughs> yourself, so. So to actually have a disclosure and have aliens open up to you yes, yes. is to actually make you bigger and he, your whole world bigger. You know what's crazy? I, I didn't tell you this, but when, when that was coming through, I saw myself in the future in the, the, in, in the center that I'm going to have. Yeah. Yes. And I saw myself giving people a talk on the reason why alien disclosure was important and how we create that reality. I saw myself just walking through this little, it wasn't really clear, but I was with, with a party that was following me and I was just showing them uh, channels that bring through ED, ET disclosure. And I'm sure I was saying about this was one time that, you know, when we spoke, yes. and it, it, it was kind of like a flash forward. And I was like, yeah, thinking about it, that's exactly what I saw. <laughs> Excellent. That's actually so, cool. Yeah. That's very so, cool. So, 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 because with me, that, that really resonated. Because I've always wondered the reason, you know, is it, is it beneficial? Does it really matter? People are struggling with, with other things. Correct. But we, we got into that in the documentary about, you know, people who do struggle with mundane things and everything else, just, you know, how it all ties back into right. the disclosure movement as well. Right, and creating your own realities. Creating your own realities. And as you become more of yourself, I think he was talking about self-identity a lot. Yes. And as you become more of yourself, you actually ignite other people to become themselves as well because it takes away their fear of who they are and because you are being so honest about who you are you can feel brave enough to share with the world and that that gives them hope yeah that gives them a light as well and helps the world expand in their hope and love and light so absolutely well you know what we could do at the end of this interview we could just show a bit of the channel material yes why don't we do that because not all of it's going to make uh, the uh, uh, documentary, which is so sad, right? Yeah. <laughs> because there, there, there was quite a bit we got into, but let's show, because I, I don't think now's the right time to put you back into channel again and get you channeling again. Okay. Well, unless you really wanted to. I think it, I'm okay, but 
I think showing part of that yes, would be better. Let, let, let's do that. <laughs> let, let's do that because we're both a bit tired. It's been a long yes, day it's today. It's been good. It's been a good. It's been an amazing day. Um, so, uh, what would you see the future of human colony? Where would you like to take that? If you could, I would like to see it become a place as well. Like you visualize a place for. Uh, people to get together for crowds yes. for audiences and things of that nature yes. but i would like to see a retreat center for human colonies so cool. for those who have problems to come and get spiritual advice from channelers from those that have experienced some of the same things that they're going through because one of the things i've learned about channeling is when they're speaking to people they're saying you're going to come through this and be able to tell other people how to get through this too Oh, this is yeah. part of your mission. You're going to come through this. Yeah. And your your mission is to bring other people through this. So I'd like to see a, a building with channeling classes. Mm -hmm. But more than that, with for places for people to come that need the encouragement to move forward, to see the light that is there to find a new atmosphere right, right, right. to belong <laughs> that is separated from their oh, old place. That. Because when they go back, they'll be different. Yeah. They will maybe learn how to change their atmosphere at home. I love that, man. That sounds such a cool place. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, this is why I feel that we're going to be, you know, that, that, that there's there's a bridge being built between us and the others that I'm meeting. Yes. This is such a, a power. This information to me is, is as powerful as me being in a past life, being addicted to religion, right? Yes. This is really a full way in to finding your own truth here right now. Yes. This is, this is so wanting to come through all, all this is. It, it's about finding who you are as a person. Yes. And letting that be the main reason for you to live is letting God make you who you're supposed to be. And then when you become that person, you're the most fabulous, wonderful, loving, creative person that you can be. And you'll be the happier person than you can ever imagine. And, and this that's, is that's your it. review. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That's <laughs> and that, that's kind of, you know, I mean, I, I, to begin with, with the foundation, I was thinking, oh, it's going to be a religion. But then, I realize the the world doesn't need any more religions. Correct. It, 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 no, this is not this this is not about that. This it is not. needs more love and freedom of expression, and yeah. it needs more encouragement, and it needs more uplifting. And that you know, uh, if people want to see where the prophets are nowadays, or if we're waiting for another thousand years for the next prophet to come, they've already come. I'm sitting in front of one now. Uh, you're sitting in front of one. We, we channel. Everyone channels. We are our own prophets. Yes. Prophets used to be channelers. That's what the, all they were. Yes, they were channelers of God, and they were they were bringing down. But a lot of that th stuff that they say that they said was a little more harsh than it really was. Because God is still a loving and friendly and wonderful God. He is not a real... He doesn't come down to destroy people. Yeah, so. well, the problem like God is love, God is forgiveness, God is great. But if you're gay, you're going to go to hell. But God is love, God yeah. is forgiveness, <laughs> God is all there is. Do you know what I mean? It's so contradictory. Do you know what it I mean? It is, it yeah, is. I, th that's not the, the reality that I, 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 I'm no, part it, of. It is yeah. that he's accepting <laughs> who you are. <laughs> right. And he wants you to, to be... Um, the greatest being you can possibly be. Yeah, when you channel God or Source or however you want yes. to personify it, is it? Do you do you feel that different in the difference in the energy compared to other channels? He yes, because he's more loving. It's more of a love feeling. So it's more just <laughs> just a heart feeling. He's more heart oriented, more heart, heart, heart. And yet, when he speaks, yes, he speaks to the mind as well. She so, speaks to the mind. And she, yeah. he, <laughs> he, she. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I guess other extraterrestrial beings, they, they have their own understanding of God as well. They absolutely do. And they believe in God also. And they, but they may see him a little differently than we do. They see him more vastly than we do at, at times, I think. And they can call on him more freely, it seems. So, at least some species. 
I wouldn't say that with raw, but no, some no. And do you think some species don't have our best interest at heart? Or yes, I do. I believe some species try to forget that they're creatures of God because it doesn't. It's not. They have not learned how to accept Him properly. Once they do, they will turn around, and some species have, but. At this point, they're denying it because because they're angry about the way other species are being treated by God. They see God treat other species really well, but sometimes he's not treating them well because they've turned their backs. So they have they continue to oh. turn their backs on him because they're jealous of others. Wow, that's deep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's kind of... Wow, I've never have thought of that consciously. Yeah. Wow. Um Okay, yeah, that's in the very interesting, very interesting. Um, now, now if, if, and if people want to get a reading with yourself, they would just go to your website, would they? Yes, I'm, well, they can go to the website and find me, or they can go to my email, which is jimreiki at gmail.com. Reiki is R-E-I-K-I. But um, I do have a Reiki business as well so okay. that's how it started that's how that yeah, website yeah. started well it doesn't so, reiki really like we said before it really yeah. opens you up man it really does it yeah ab absolutely and i mean have you ever been interested in doing a book i have and there is one already started but it's not about me uh, but I'm, I'll leave that for the future. Okay, well, that's interesting. I th okay, well, well, there you go. There's, there's something's happening there as well. Um, and you've also trained a lot of channelers as well. I have. There is a few that have uh, that I have uh, helped to get to where they are today. A couple. So, so is that something that you could offer people if they came to you remotely? They, they yeah, yeah. There's a, there are some that are coming to me right now that say. How, how can I channel better? How I think that my calling is channeling. How can you help me? And so I channel through the answer because each person is individual and I don't know them, but other species or beings do. Ah. And they will say, this is how you can do it better. Right, right. That Oh, that's bloody interesting. God. Um... Right and that, yeah, and um, I, I've interviewed one or two like Ivan Teller. There's a few others as well that you, you must have had a lot of people go through your, um, you know, go through your platform. Um, a lot of people have. I've channeled with a lot of. people. Yeah, that's what I mean. You've channeled with. Yes, a lot. Yeah. I have channeled with a lot of people and all over the world. I've, I channel with people on every continent except Antarctica. <laughs> so. Uh, so yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh, you know, thinking about now, there's a lady from Saudi Arabia um, that I want to give a shout out to that that also recommended yourself as oh, well. Oh yes. So if she's watching this, uh, Nirvana Bliss or whoever she was, um, yeah, thank thank her for thank you. Yeah, 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 for connecting us. I'm so so glad that she did. No hi. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Oh no hi. Okay, okay, good for yeah. Well, see, you've got people all over the world that love you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, and I love them. Yes. They're wonderful people. Yes. Well, you you know, uh, you, uh, again, like I said at the beginning, just got to do some searching on the internet. And you'll find so many videos. Actually, what we'll do, we'll link your YouTube channel in the description just below this video as well. And of oh, course, thank you. That's all, cool. all the links to your website are going to be there as well. Um, well, look, uh, we're, we're a, a few minutes uh, left here. What would you say right now is an important message for people that you can give to them? Um, look inside. I think that Ish said it the best. He was, at the end there, he was saying, everybody needs to be themselves. Find who you are. Find your light that shines. Find your happiness, your joy, your main, your main thing that makes you the happiest and move toward it and try to, and get out of the darkness. And a lot of people will say, how do I do that? How do I do that? But you create your reality, remember that? And go somewhere where there is positivity. Go somewhere where there is light. Find somewhere that there's light. You can find some place. Find some th a video that makes you happy. Find the joy and start creating around that. Start bringing that into your reality. Start bringing positivity into your reality. 
believe me, I know what it's like to be in a dark, sad, terrible, angry place. And it's, it's not worth it. You need to find your freedom. Yes. Find your light. Yes. And God is that light. He's love. He's light. Yes. But he has created many kinds of positivities that you can use as a stepping stone to get to that kind of light. Absolutely. Well, um, James, um, <laughs> yeah. um, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thanks. For it's you. been such a pleasure. Uh, I mean, we, we meet in a crazy time in my life right now where I'm just always on the road right now, uh, one place to the other, and it, and, it, and it does catch up with me sometimes. Oh, yes, it, it will. It, it, always, <laughs> it does. And doing these interviews, there's a lot of energy. You oh, take. yes. Oh, my God, have I absorbed some energy. I, tell you, I feel like I could sleep for a week, right? <laughs> I bet, absolutely. Yeah, but in a good way, in a good way. So I just want to say thank you, and I know our paths will cross again. Well, thank you very much, and I, I agree with you. I know that we'll someday meet again. We will. We will. So um, we're going to link everything up at the description of the video. So we'll just roll a bit of footage right now uh, to show you the some of the clips of the interview that we just did uh, for the documentary with James. Greetings. Greetings. My name is Ish. I'm an ascended master from the Draconian race. But I've come because I may have some good information for you. Well, firstly, let me just say thank you so, so much for coming through right now. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, it feels like a very special time to be here right now with you. It does feel like a special time. There are so many things going on, on your world and in the universe. It is a very special time indeed. There are prophecies from all over the place that are coming to pass and are being speculated upon as we speak at the moment. Prophecies to me are very interesting because they can come true in very unusual ways. And they don't always necessarily mean that they are just regular exactly as spoken but they're symbolic as well what would be some of the prophecies that would be uh, helpful to us right now to hear oh i don't know if it would be helpful for you but it would be interesting for you uh the the prophecies that happen with around your planet would be that the planet is a hybridized planet at this point, and that as they enter the neighborhood of the galaxy, they will be able to help so many heal in so many ways. You see, because of the way that your planet was seeded, it is a wonderful DNA for healing for those species that have uh, evolved beyond emotions and beyond physical understanding of themselves, they've let themselves go, so to speak. But your DNA will help them revitalize, emotionalize. You realize good decision-making does come with emotion. It doesn't come without it. And those that have intellectualized themselves out of existence in some ways, purely intellectualized, are very illogical. That's interesting what you're, what you're saying. So a hybridization. Has, how long has this hybridization been going on for? Oh, since the beginning of your existence. You see, this planet was put here for that reason. It was to be hybridized from the very beginning. It had started off with primitive beginnings as well, as you can see by your very long past uh, Neanderthals and... Croatia man and all those different things. I don't even know the names of them all, but they were all changed quickly. You'll find that there's many missing links because they evolved them quickly. And when you say they evolved them, who are they? Many different species. But Anunnaki, other, other peoples, some people from the Atlantis periods, 
all different there was many different species and that continues even nowadays absolutely in some ways they do guide you so when we say about disclosure is that more of an inner disclosure rather than an outer disclosure disclosure is happening all the time that's part of what channeling's for yes 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 because uh, uh, contact has happened, uh, obviously it continues to happen on our planet with, with, with uh, contacting the consciousness side of the ET. Uh, yes. And, uh, and is the ETs the right thing to call them? I mean, I mean, are we not all alien in some respects to this planet? Of course you are. ETs is probably the less, least acceptable because they don't consider themselves extraterrestrials, meaning that they're from this planet, but, but they do uh, don't mind the alien word or the for any reason they're not offended by anything that you say really because they don't they know that you don't really understand what's happening and they really know that you know not anything about them is our um uh, okay then well uh, in the prophecies that are out there yes i mean is disclosure uh, on a mass scale, one of those prophecies? Well, you see, it's like lighting candles. Um, as you light as many candles as you can, one to another, then the light gets brighter and people start to understand. And then those at the top that don't have even any candlesticks because they refuse to be a part of that lighting will have to be hmm, brought into the picture. And so they don't want to be left out, of course. But no disclosure is going to be forced upon us. I mean, are we in a spiritual... Uh, is our consciousness at the right level for any sort of mass disclosure? Not at the moment. It is coming to that, though. As, as um, you become awakened, you know, there's a lot of fourth dimensional energy aware, uh, being released on this planet at this time since the 2012 beginning of the ascension. But it is not yet to a place where people are familiar, or at least not many are familiar with this energy. Why? Uh, okay, so let's get a bit better background on yourself then. Yes. Um, what is your connection to James? I found him as he was channeling, and I know that he, he could handle what I had to say, so I came to him. Do you speak through others? I speak through very few others, but I speak to many. <laughs> That's a paradox. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 do you speak to many others through a different type of connection? As in yes. Your... And what you're coming through as a different type of consciousness? Yes. Would you be able to name any other consciousness? That you well, have? those are those. There's those that do not know me, who I really am, and the, my name escapes them as I come through, but yet they channel me, and they know that I am a good consciousness, but they do not know my name. I gave my name to this one, and he will use it. But I do speak to others during sessions. Okay. And, and uh, have you already crossed over in, a, in, in our understanding? Or? Oh yes, I am a spirit. Okay. And if there was a timeline of when you existed, how long ago might that be? About 18,000 years ago. Oh my God. Wow. And, and your technology at the time? Was draconian. You see draconians back then in another part of existence, not in this galaxy, were very different. Um, these draconians that are that you are aware of in this existence are very different than the ones that I am related to. I am from originally the Sirius area, and, but we no longer exist there. We have migrated away from that area. But we, technology-wise, were higher functioning, higher dimensional, and I was mm, perhaps one of the leaders of my planet spiritually, but now I do not really look at it that way. I would like to be something 
more integrated in the universe. I would like to be part of a more integral part of everything. Has your consciousness, your, your evolution, is it more into the everything? It is. Some do not understand how I work or why I work the way I do. And some might think that I'm dishonest about the way I, I, I started with my integration with Earth because I didn't r uh, identify myself as a draconian because many were afraid of draconians because I see their existence in this part of the galaxy was a little bit more mm, primitive and a little bit more vo uh, violent. But in my section of the universe, we, the draconians were very different. We look different as well. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much. So, so uh, obviously you're connected right now in this moment with myself, in this present moment. I like it. I do as well, and I'm really happy that you're here. But are you connecting with any other multidimensional aspects? Yes. How... Uh, well, uh, no, let me, uh, let me not... I was going to ask how many. Does it, that doesn't matter, but... No, it doesn't. I have to connect with other interdimensional um, aspects because that is how I operate as an Ascended Master. I connect with other Ascended Masters as we understand how to go about with communication. It's not a simple thing you understand to communicate with a species that is less uh, advanced than we are or but we don't want to be seen as more advanced, but we want to communicate as best as possible in advancing what you have. Absolutely. Is, is coming to a dimension like this, or coming through someone like James, is that advancing you on this, on, uh, spiritually as well? Oh, I always learn things. <laughs> it's silly, isn't it? But I do learn things from humans that I would not have thought about because, remember, I'm not from, uh, I'm not an Ascended Master from Third Dimension, but a higher dimension still. And Third Dimension has a lot of interesting, basic uh, things that I have to relearn in some ways.